Okay. All right, hold on before we start. So we'll bring it up here. Um, okay, just take yours and put it out here and just put the whole tin down, whatever you plan on doing as far as serving. And then you'll give a little speech and say something like, my name is David and uh, I present to you this marvelous dessert called blah, blah, blah. Um, you'll find that it tastes incredible. It's gonna <laughs> dance like angels on your tongue, and uh, stuff, stuff like that. And then say enjoy, and then they'll eat it, and then they'll probably ask questions and say, "Oh, right. Well, that's because I made this with this, and I got the idea from that." Does that make sense? Does, is that... Okay. Are you recording? Ready? Welcome to the 2017 Johannes Dessert Competition. This year we featured nine competitors and um, a few new people. So enjoy, judges, be ready to be delighted and have your taste buds explode. Our first competitor is Helen. Called Petit Fool d'Ange. It is a an almond cake with a berry filling covered in mascarpone cheese frosting with white chocolate covered on top of it. And what kind of berry? It is a mix of raspberry, blueberry, and blackberry. Can we just taste the first? Just wait. Eat it. How many calories do you think is in each one? Not, 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 not. <laughs> Only 20. 20. Oh, 20. <laughs> right answer. Oh. Beth, uh, uh, can you give her a. Uh, I want a piece. <laughs> she got the layering really good, and you see all the decoration on the side. Yeah, it's a it's an almond cake. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Do we just take that back? Yeah, usually that's what happens. Can you cut it in half like that? Everybody does a little bit. Can you cut it in half? Yeah. <laughs> Can you do you want to try it? Cut it. Cut it. Cut it like that. Everybody does a little bit. Can you cut it in half? Can you get the ingredients? It's a mascarpone cheese uh, frosting, and it has cream cheese and mascarpone. Yeah. And, um, can I have a piece? No, this is actually uh, all the ingredients of things that I really enjoyed, and I decided to combine them all and see how they would taste together. Oh, is it not like an original thing? It is. I mean, I mean, it's not like yeah. a. No, it's not. No, I took a, I took pieces of, of different things that I really enjoyed, and I combined them all together. No, it's actually nice. Did you like the outcome? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I put on a little bit of weight at eating the outcome. <laughs> All right, our second competitor is Sarah. Uh, hi, Sarah. Hi. Uh, this is chocolate, chocolate deco. Um, and it's a soft, moist cake with a dark hazelnut um, mousse with a, um, like microwave chocolate, like so, like milk, milk chocolate, and. How long did it take for you to make it? Two days. Two days? Wow. So you were really working hard, huh? Yeah. Did you get 
kind of pink it was? I know you just said it was a that hazelnut. Is the most hazelnut did you say? That was it? Hazelnut made inside? Did you bake it by yourself? Do you think this is a recipe that we can share with kids and they can do it on their own? I don't know. I'm not sure, huh? It'd be a little challenging. How did you uh, melt the actual paper for it? Um, I, I put it in the microwave and I drizzled it over the, and it just made the cake with the, so it like, I put like the mousse on it, and then after that I just drizzled the cake, the, the chocolate on it, and just went over it. It looks nice, Sarah. I like the way you decorated it. It looks very nice. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Is uh, Tara and Dan. Um, I'm Dan, this is Kara, um, this is our dish, uh, this is a um, peanut butter granache, a homemade granache, and number four, you're up, sorry, yeah, number four, so we're going to tell a little story and how we made, we came about this, so deep in the jungles of Costa Rica, there was a rare cocoa bean that only is harvested on the summer solstice. Summer solstice. And we, we brush right. crashed and, and, and fought hunger, starvation. And salvation <laughs> just to get a cup whole... of this cocoa for you. Nice. So we hope you appreciate it because I still got a couple scars from it. Does it come with malaria? Huh? Oh, no, 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 we're very careful. We're very careful. Right, no, thank you. So, what was the hardest part about making it? Uh, this is the hardest part about making it would be getting when, when. Uh, um, when basically when we uh, <laughs> when we make it, um, we take the we take normal chocolate chips and then um, it's a very simple recipe. It's just chocolate chips and then um, um, condensed sweet milk. And so the hardest part is once once I combine it and uh, heat up the chocolate so that it melts together. The hardest part is being able to uh, put it in its molds. Like I, I have an actual mold. Um, last time, last time I made them, I actually like hand rolled them, but I wanted to have that consistency of size, so I used my um, uh, truffle mold. And the hardest part is getting it in there because it's a, a fairly a dense mixture where you can you can literally mold it with your hands. And so getting it in the mold and then having it consistent is, is actually very difficult. Dan, don't you mean when you're trying to get through customs to, with the cocoa? Bean? <laughs> 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 That's right. I, I know a guy who knows a guy. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's also. Uh, there was something over there. It's also good. <laughs> 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 I, was like, oh. I thought I heard them burning all that chocolate upstairs, and then I could smell it afterwards. <laughs> usually, what you do after you uh, usually what you do after you uh, you melt it is actually you can put it in the fridge, and then it becomes more like a like a dough, and you can mold it. Thank you. Which one? Which one? He made. He made. He made the truffle, and um, I added the topping, and then the uh, the I drizzled the chocolate and the powder on top. So it was a combined effort. So husband and wife effort. I love that. Thank you. 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 Thank
What's up? Pleasure to have the food. Oh, show here. Oh, Alright, so what you have before you um, is a, a take on a banana cream pie. Right? So we've got a couple things going on. I know it looks kind of crazy, but let me explain what it all is. So really early this morning, I had Molly wake up and uh, she started crushing some, uh, was it honey graham crackers? Spent all day crushing them with her bare hands, karate chop, all that kind of stuff. Really cool. So that was the foundation, the crust, if you will. Um, so we have graham cracker. Uh, then we have a couple of different types of banana. Uh, we have a banana custard and a banana uh, gelatin slash a banana pudding uh, mixed in that's right on top of the graham cracker. And then we have bana fresh bananas uh, picked right from uh, our tree outside, of course, uh, to layer on top of that. Uh, we have some homemade whipped cream as well, too, uh, throughout. Uh, and then drizzled on top of everything was a... Oh, I don't even know what to call this. Uh, it's like a banana syrup or something or other. Just kind of threw it all together. What's that? Uh, you know, it's actually, I pureed some bananas, mixed it with a couple of other things, secret ingredients, of course, can't disclose that. You know. Um, so yeah, pour that uh, over everything, and then also, in the little cup, you'll actually have a rum, a banana rum shot. So it's the same puree and everything, mixed in with a little bit of rum. So that's for you to just drink and enjoy it. So. So, Salute. are we supposed to eat them separate together? You can do whatever you want. Enjoy it however you like. So, it's just a little drink to go with your uh, banana cream. What insurance company is your job? Well, I was having people taste test, you know. Did you make that pudding from scratch? I did, yes. Yep. Everything's, from, everything's from scratch. So. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Know, what I made was um, a date roll. Um, inside the date roll was dates and a soft dough and how to make it. Uh, you, you take dough and um, you put you put like dates um, inside. Like you flatten the dough, you put the dates inside of the dough. Um, you make it into a swirl or whatever design you like, and then you bake it, and then um, I think you bake it for five minutes, and then and then you take it out of the oven, and it's like this. Um, yeah. No. Because you think about it. Yeah. We still talk about Are they fresh dates? Dry dates? Um, I think they're fresh. Super heavy, uh, it wouldn't taste the same as um, if it's not heavy. That's good. Did you have to chill the dough before you made it? Did you have to chill the dough before you made it? Or like after you stayed it? I think so. <laughs> Well, hello. How are you doing? I am good. How are 
you? Merry Christmas! Feliz Navidad! <laughs> Yeah, so what I have for you guys today is a coconut macaroon. Um, I, it's a homemade, uh, usually everyone doesn't like the fact that I make semi-homemade, so I decided to go all out and make all from scratch. Um, so how I made, and a little cherry, for, a little amaretto cherry for decoration. Um, so how I made this was, it's a coconut with uh, condensed milk. Um, and then this was my first time. I never made a meringue before, and it was pretty. You know, I was pretty proud of myself for making a meringue from scratch. You folded that in, and then you baked that mixture. And then I took chocolate and I melted the chocolate down. I coated the bottom, and then I sprinkled it on top. How did you make the meringue? So you just take egg whites and salt, and you beat it at a high or high intensity and then um, what you want is a like stiff peaks so yeah now I know how to make meringue so. <laughs> right, look out yeah right and Henry loves it so much that I'm gonna be making it more for him <laughs> so I'm the winner really <laughs> That I don't, um, but everything else, you know, the chocolate I melted down and yeah, shaved chocolate and melted that down in a double boiler. My mom wants her double boiler back. Okay, so you better hurry up and make some Right, exactly. Yep. That's good. No, I, I particularly really like how you have the actual like whipped cream. Um, yeah. Just like mm -hmm. just a tiny little bit on the little soil there. Thank you. Nice. It's, a good it's not a heavy cookie. It's very yeah, light. Sugar. You know, some cookies are loaded with chocolate, and you, I think that's just enough chocolate. Definitely not to taste. But not, not right. Too much just to compliment. Because even with the condensed, you know, condensed milk is heavy and sweet. You don't want to add, you know, a whole bunch of chocolate on it to make it even more sweeter. Really? Um, it was only 30 to 35 minutes, so I did like a, because I'm new, with, I just bought a new house and we have new appliances, so I did it for 32 minutes, because otherwise I think if I would have kept it longer, it would have burnt the coconut and burnt the bottom, yeah, and you don't want that to <laughs> Oh, thank you. Now what did you get for, like, so I'm into Pinterest cooking, so I like to find like easy different recipes, um, and I found, um, the, the other thing kind of the story is um, my mom and I do cookies every year for Christmas, and I always try to do something new, and so this was my something new, so I was very proud of it. Henry. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself for the best dessert by Henry Johannes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Judges. Welcome. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. Isn't the presentation? Isn't isn't the presentation beautiful? It is such a beautiful. It's such a beautiful presentation. <laughs> so, this dessert you're about to eat almost got eliminated. It almost didn't make it here because what happened was this morning. 
I woke up and I came out to uh, the living room here, or actually the kitchen, and my mother was there and Tom was there, and we almost ate all of them. And there was, a, in fact, there's no more samples because we did eat them all. Sorry, Tom's fault, my mom's fault, my fault. That's how good this was. We actually we weren't even going to share them. It's biscotti. It's peppermint chocolate. It's made from scratch. Everything's made from scratch in it. Um, a biscotti. Are you guys familiar with biscotti by chance? It's a cross between a cookie and a biscuit. So you're not going to have too much sugar. Um, the peppermint on top complements it. The hot chocolate complements. Would you take a bite of it? Or <laughs> Don't use a fork. It's a biscotti. It's going to be hard. Just lift it, or, or you can cut it. It's, it's going to be a hard. Be prepared for hard because, like I said, it's a cross between a crispy cookie and a biscuit. I think I'm like just going to bite it. Yeah. And after you're done with it, actually, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and just pass it around everybody else can try it because I don't have any samples. It's, it's cool. Well, wait for it. Wait for it. Because you're going to notice the flavor starts off as one that's going to change all of a sudden. Right now, right? And all of a sudden, peppermint, chocolate. It's just happening in your mouth. It's wonderful. It's like, it's like... It's like there's a party in my mouth. There's a party in your mouth! Thank you, Sean, for saying oh, it. I didn't want to say it, but there is a party happening in my mouth right now. That's right. <laughs> Questions? Alright, so what's the difference between the In terms of like making it versus biscotti versus biscuit, like what is the actual difference? Um, that would be, gosh, I don't remember the exact recipe. It's more flour for biscuits. Um, for cookie, it depends on if you want a wet or you want a crunchy. It's going to have to do with um, the thinness of it or the thickness of it. And you're going to have more moisture in the cookie when you put that than you would a biscuit. So then we would cross them. Um, but the real, I, I think what you're really asking is, like, what makes this into that middle? It's the recipe plus you bake it three times. So, right, because you bake it, first time you bake, because it's a very wet recipe, so this thing looks like literally a big turtle, you know, when you first make it. Totally. And then you put the dough out, and then what you do is you throw it in an oven at about 350. So think dehydration. It's more of a dehydration than it is really giving it that power because then you drop the temperature down to 325, flip it inside, put it back in, flip it on its other side, put it back in 325. So it goes 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. By the time you're done, you have this, because if you noticed, um, it's not really dry, it's crispy. And, to, and usually when you have a crispy cookie, they're really thin. But if the sky is not thin, the sky is thick. Biscuits are soft, you know, so really it's more of a dehydration. It's baked three times. That's what makes it different. Uh, if you looked up the recipe, a little bit of moisture, more moisture for cookie, and a, and a lot less moisture for biscuit would be kind of the best way to describe it. Okay. Oh, uh, that was the type of actual chocolate you used. Like chocolate. I can't let you know that secret. No. No. <laughs> All right. You're asking about in the biscotti? I'm not gonna give my secret okay. away. <laughs> pass it on. Go ahead and pass it on. It's good, isn't it? That's a good trick. That's a very good trick. You know why, right? Oh, I'm never supposed to tell you. Is <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of dairy in it? Is that sweet? That's what it is. But you can't tell the trick. But that's what it is. And, I, and maybe you weren't even asking about the chocolate in the cookie, I just assumed. Maybe you're talking about the chocolate on top. That's just white chocolate. That's just melted, or that's just melted white chocolate. And then the peppermint is um, not the hard candy cane, but you know, like the softer one? It's dab mashed and then put on top. A little bit of power, a little bit of, you know, um, larger pieces for presentation. But um, what I like about it is that that doesn't kick in until after. Like, first it hits you as a boring cookie. And you're like, oh, it doesn't have a lot of sugar. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, where'd that come from? Chocolate? White chocolate? Peppermint? And then your breast smells good. 
That's that's an extra, you know, that's an extra bonus. I don't remember how long it took because the weirdest thing happened. I woke up at 2 a.m. yesterday and I just started baking. <laughs> and then we went to Sarah's parents at like 10 o'clock in the morning. So I don't know. I knew I do know it. It takes. 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes to actually in the oven, but before that, I don't, you know. So, do you so it wasn't like, you know what I mean, but it was, you know. But I think the preparation's more, because I don't know how you guys cook, but like for me, I look up three, four different recipes, I try to pull the science out from different recipes that kind of like put, you know, put it together in my head and make my own. And then do it, you know what I mean? So I was prepared for it. So don't, you know, it's not like one of those things where, like, ah, I don't know, you know. So it didn't take me too long, is what I'm saying. But the preparation took a long time. I started planning about a year before. You guys were going to taste my delicious balls, but I changed it to the Scotty because. Well, they got banned years ago. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> what? Next. <laughs> you guys weren't here. For, I don't think any of you were here, but I made these really delicious truffle balls. Okay. It's the first year the judges spit everything out. <laughs> no. Don't listen to Luis. You know, Luis and David, they think they're really good at stuff. Oh, here we go. So we grab them? I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. A, a spit bucket at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice, Andy. <laughs> all right, we're good? Any more questions? No. <laughs> Huh? Well, what are you talking about, y'all? Go up, man. Thank you. Um, basically, what I did was um, I wanted to take into consideration the holidays and chocolate candy everybody gives away boxes of candy so I did my take on those candy boxes and what I have here is um, a hazelnut chocolate coffee mousse in a chocolate cup an amaretto um, chocolate covered cherry a coconut truffle and this is a raspberry marshmallow um, kind of a pinwheel and there's a little bit of a carbonated surprise. Sorry, we're missing a picture of this one. I'm sorry? I like the touch of the, the little, like, uh... Oh, the gold? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't know, better. Hey, why don't you let her work on that one? Because she has for one more, then. If I wear <laughs> That's the only one that looks like that. I like the texture of the coconut. Wait, that coconut thing you put in there? It's like she said the same thing I did. Do you have to roll this up? Yes. By yourself? It wasn't that hard. Oh, you did your kids? Or relax in the food. I've never seen that sort of like gelatin. Like roll before? Like how did you come up with that? Pinterest. And basically, it's just um, jello, water, and marshmallows. And then um, I put the sugar on it. 
It's most there. What is and the cherries I soaked in amaretto, then covered them in chocolate. And the syrup is um, cherry juice, the amaretto that was um, that the cherries were soaking in, and some powdered sugar, some, some cherry flavoring, actually Kool Aid, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> oh, and red coloring. So, so why did you decide to combine all these flavors? You know what? I just wanted to do like an assorted, like how you get assorted boxes of chocolates. So I wanted to do an assortment. So my um, my around an assorted box of chocolates. And I wanted to try to get stuff that worked well together too. Okay. I like that everything has like a different flavor to it. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually really cool. Because you, know, you, you don't just have that one chocolate, you know, like an uh, item or something like that. Right. It's then you have like the, the actual thing. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to, especially add in the um, jello, the marshmallow, the raspberry, was to kind of break up the richness of the chocolate. And the texture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You made it to the end, my friends. You have made it to the end. Congratulations. Here's your prize. Today, I said before you, a little creation of mine. You have a white chocolate tulip cup. On the inside, you have a dense French mousse. So you're not going to get that light fluffiness that you have on the Light French uh, light mousse. You have a dense French mousse. On the top, you have a raspberry cognac sauce. And that's what's drizzling around. Feel free to mix that together. Even feel free to cut into that tulip cup. Break it off, scoop it up, and enjoy what hits your tongue. What's up for the fifth plate? <laughs> I sure did. What I did is I started with a water balloon, melted down some white chocolate. You take that water balloon and you take one side of the water balloon and you dip in. Then you, you leave that in there for a little bit, dip the next side, and then you continue. Is that like a disposable sides. dessert? And then you set it on some uh, parchment paper, throw it into a freezer or out in the garage, which happened to work perfectly overnight because it was so cold. And once it sets, you pop that balloon, it shrivels up, you pull it out, and you're left with that beautiful creation of a white chocolate tuna cup. Yeah. How about that, huh? Yeah, that, yeah. Cognac is not just any, you know, lower shelf cognac. What that is, that's a little Dom Pedro. Dom Pedro is the heart of Mexico. Is it North Korean It is so good. Was that North Wonderful. Korean chocolate? It fills your soul. It fills your soul with goodness, with joy, and that comes out in that sauce along with the chocolate. Because I don't know who doesn't like chocolate. Why is there blue on those plates? Oh my God, there's blood on the plates. Pouring out to them. <laughs> there's no hepatitis. I guarantee like they, uh, there's the no RH yet. factor to that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know two people understand that. Is that a baby bird fetus and a broken eye? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like me. Yeah, particularly in the coats, it, it is a heavy nose, but it also is like, it's very light on the top. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, right, right. Just it's it's, 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 it's gone. It's, it's not a thing that we have to do. You have that white chocolate, it really does. Linda. And then the fruit gets in it, yeah. It's just a nice, a little bone pedo saying goodbye as it leaves your time. Oh, Coco's cook, yeah, Coco's send it back! <laughs> Anything else? I hope you enjoyed. You guys have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Are they going to announce turn first and then? Good to go. Ready? Okay, drum roll. Drum roll. Let's go. Yeah. First of all, we had to pick anybody to be a winner. Oh, Who did you
good job and it was close. We added up all the numbers fairly, didn't we? We used our computers, our, our phones to add it up. So we didn't do it in our mind, just so you know. We gave you a fair shake at it. But somebody has to win and somebody has to lose, right? So third place winner is the presentation number one. Number one. Oh, yeah. There's something about the winner. You guys want to describe, say what you like about the dirt and what, what you thought when they brought it out. So we particularly like the presentation of the whole uh, dessert in general. Um, everything about it, especially the, the base around the actual biscuit itself is, is amazing. I, I thought it was really good. And, um, one of the things I, I, I find particularly interesting is that we use the beads, which uh, for some soft desserts, it's a very difficult to get the beads right on it, where you don't want too many of them, but you want it to be flashy, but still without too much crunch, and I, I thought it was really good, just, just the right amount. And your flavors were exquisite, so you did a really good job. Yeah, much better. That's too sweet. Very good. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Well, in second place, we had the Dun 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 Suzy! Oh, Suzy, you almost made the mark. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. But everything was so beautiful on the plate. The way you mixed the colors and the textures were excellent. And the, um... I thought it was a very, I was like, I, I know you were going more for the, the actual candy I don't know. box. I, I, mean, I got it sort of like saying, a, almost you know. like an Alice in Wonderland sort of feel to it. Oh. 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 If you want to know who's in fourth, I'll let you know. I do want to know. Because. All right. Uh, so, David, I thought your moose was like spot on, exactly as you described. It was heavy, I but yeah. when you touch it, with your tongue, it, it, it literally just disappears, which is insane, but it leaves the taste behind. And you're like, whoa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is this? And those cups that you made were over the top. The work and the, just the whole composition was A+. Plus. The sauce that you made was, it did it for me for the whole combination. It had that tartness and the color, and it was very mm. good. Well, thanks. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. 